You're watching an RH Reality Check production brought to you by rhrealitycheck.org. From its inception, the anti-choice movement has wisely employed misleading and propagandistic terms that tug at heartstrings while shutting down brainwaves. On this episode of Reality Check, we'll discuss some of these terms and suggest some replacements that more accurately reflect reality. Being pro-life is wonderful, and who isn't in favor of life? That's all our movement is about, saving the lives of unborn babies. So hop on board the pro-life train, why don't you? Pro-life. It's a misleading phrase that has been picked up by the mainstream media. It implies that the anti-choice movement is interested in reducing the number of abortions. But if that were true, you'd see them support policies that actually reduce the abortion rate policies like comprehensive sex ed or access to contraception. But down the line, these groups oppose such measures. That's why the better term for them is anti-choice, or anti-sex, or forced birth. I joined the big protest in front of the abortion factory today. We had tons of great literature explaining how those pro-aborts in the abortion industry don't want us to cut off their flow of cash. Those pro-aborts sicken me with their greed and blood money. Pro-abort is a scare term that incorrectly describes pro-choicers. Pro-choicers want you to choose what's best for your life and will support your rights whether that choice is to give a child up for adoption, raise a child, or terminate the pregnancy. Terms like abortion industry or abortion factory imply that abortion provision is somehow different than other medical care. It's not. Most abortions are performed in women's health clinics that offer a variety of services and providers have to put up with more stress and stigma than most doctors. Really, if you were in this to be making money, you'd choose another line of work. We need laws mandating that doctors give pre-abortion counseling to patients with a script that we've written about the dangers of abortion. It's important that we give them all the facts and especially let them know about the dangers of post-abortion syndrome. What they like to call counseling isn't that at all but is in fact an attempt to undermine the real counseling already provided by clinics. Most of the scripts that anti-choice legislators require doctors to read to women are riddled with misinformation and outright lies. Anti-choicers also like to claim that women who have had abortion suffer from something called post-abortion syndrome, which is similar to post-traumatic stress disorder. The American Psychological Association has studied these claims and found them to be baseless. The disease was made up to what else? Scare people. Language choice might seem like a small thing, but it's not. Inflammatory terms work by getting people so emotional that they can't or won't process the facts. We can't stop anti-choicers from using propagandistic language, but we can make better word choices ourselves and pressure media outlets to use more accurate terms. <laughs> 